Now, the Bram Weinstein Show on Washington's new home for sports. ESPN 630. Hey, baby. Hey, baby. Hi, everyone. Hi, everyone. <laughs> Hi, everyone. What's up? Is that smooth rock, Ted? Yeah. Yes. Incognito, Ted. Incognito, yes. Ted. Stop firing bullets at me, everybody. Oh, I see I what you did there. I can't take it. I can't take it. Spells. It's very upsetting. I'm going to use the power of the boundary stones to stop all of you. Power of the boundary <laughs> stones. In that oh, post man. report, too, uh, I think we might have mentioned it, but I still laugh that they called it Project Potter. Po- Project Potter? Yeah, did you see that one? That's what the that's boundary what Vir- stone thing that, was? No, 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 no. That's what oh. the Virginia uh, government was calling their economic study, I guess. To keep it under wraps? Yeah. Potter. Project Potter? As, as in, like, Harry Potter. Harry who's Potter? A wizard. He's a wizard. Oh, Oh, it took okay. you a second there. Okay, I right. thought it was obvious. <laughs> in this, right, in this one, who's Voldemort yeah. is the question. <laughs> is that Ted? It depends what side you're on, I guess. Depends what side you're on. Yeah. If you're on Ted's side, it's Louise from Richmond. It's that's Voldemort. Right. Correct. If you're on Louise's side, it's Ted. Ted, yeah, that's right. Voldemort. Yeah. Don't say his name. That's right, yeah. He who shall, he who shall not be named. Okay. Uh, I referenced this yesterday, but I'd like to um, talk about it for a moment as we continue... The news hour, Tom Sherwood would be very proud that we're not sports radio anymore. We are civic radio That's right. because of what's happening in and around town now. Abe Poland's oldest son, Robert, who lives in Massachusetts, but says he, uh, he still is in close contact and he likes to keep an eye on what's happening with the teams that his father used to own and sure. sold to Ted Leonsis, sure. um, sp- expressed uh, some opposition to what's going on. And said he wants it to stay in Washington and left this saying, I hope you change your mind. And in an open letter, he wrote this. I hope you still have an open mind and there's still some time to persuade you not to go ahead with this, which is move to Virginia. He said, of course, you realize that this move will be devastating to the whole community around Capital One Arena and to the economy and spirit of the entire city of Washington. And I hope that recognition will be enough to persuade you to stay put. Uh, As this article in the Post details, because they talked to the Post about it, um, the line that I keep referencing was his interview last week with Channel 9 where he said the die is cast, which was, I'm moving. Yeah, right. Which, to I said, if Louise gets her way and (laughs) stops this from happening, at least for now, if she literally stops this from happening or the Senate stops this from happening or there's just too much political blowback and everybody backs off and doesn't want to do it, Mm -hmm. well, then what does he do? Right. Grovel to Muriel Bowser or, or something what? else. Or what, yeah. Right. Or something else. Yeah, right, exactly. You Which know? I heard the latest with Virginia is they could push it back a year. They could delay it uh-huh. instead of vote on it right now. So, Well, they could do all sorts of things. Sure, sure, sure. But I'm sure Ted is going, I don't want to do this for a year. <laughs> I want to know what I've got to deal with moving forward. I mean, that's just that goes without saying. He wants to know what the move is going to be. <laughs> So um, I think it's instructive just to hear what Robert Pollan had to say, not just that, you know, his father obviously passed away. Yep. So, um, you know, not just because, you know, he he, you know, has a stake in this, but the reasons why he has a stake in sure. this and the reasons why he seems to he is kind of linking this to the legacy of his dad and his family. And their legacy is clearly not about winning with this organization, but they clearly are hanging their hat on what they did for the community. Yep. Um, very philanthropic family, and he describes it this way. Um, obviously, they moved the teams down in the late 1990s. Uh, Chinatown was revitalized. I was going down there when I was in college. This is before MCI Center, now you know uh, Capital One Arena, uh, was there. It was a shell of itself. It was a dangerous part of town. Yep. That going in there obviously altered it, not unlike the way Nats Park and the development down in the Navy Yard has kind of altered all of that. Sure. Um, and so, you know, I, I, I'm hearing out everybody here. I also think that, you know, like to be fair to Ted Leonsis and crew, um, that the city leaders have failed him in and around this area and trying to control the issues that they have with what's going on down there. And I think more than anything, he probably just wants to see a plan of how it's going to be fixed. That said, this didn't come out of nowhere. They've been working on this for a long time. 
And that means that they have eyed this sweetheart deal is what he's looking at. Mm -hmm. And he understands, and we all understand, this benefits them. It doesn't benefit us. It benefits them. And that's the hard sell that Ted has to try to make here. And at the same time, there's a lot of people saying you're giving up civic duty here by doing what you're doing. And Robert Poland said this. The one thing I'll add to that is um, the first, I think it was the first Barry's for Luga article that hit. I think it was Barry, where he just said, he laid out what you and I have been hinting at but basically everyone looks bad here like it's not it's not that it's you don't blame ted for pulling out of dc and going to virginia but it's also things are perfect down there correct you do have to blame you like muriel gets a portion of the blame of course and whatever way i said from the get-go i do i do understand some of his reasoning here you know outside of this amazing deal he's it seems like he's about to get to exponentially grow the footprint and increase the value of his franchises yeah like yeah Ultimately, though, so, you, and, you know, and that's a bad reason, obviously. Of course, like, that's a bad reason. That's what I was going to say. Ultimately, to me, it's been the messaging has been actually where it's been pretty messed up here. And that's yes, this, this goes on to because they can't get around that. that part. Well, yeah, well, it was also- everybody knows like the end game. He could sit there and portray this as like, well, we're just we're reading. But he hasn't either, you know, though. Like, that's no. the problem <laughs> because there's no saying it. That's why. <laughs> There are there are two mass well there's three massive problems uh-huh. you know that he runs into um, the the ethical civic duty that you have to not do what you're doing because you know what will happen to the city if you do it it doesn't mean that Washington D.C. will now fall into a sinkhole and never return you know but like <laughs> but like clearly like this is a this is bad news yeah. <laughs> yeah this is really bad news yeah. right it's really bad news um, two you know it benefits you. Everybody knows right. that. Right. Don't paint it like it benefits us. Right. It and, doesn't. And Actually, taking... it's harder to get to this place for most of the people that are in two of the jurisdictions. The other one, too, right. is we're not taking taxpayer money. And it's like, you are. The, like You are. You actually are. The, yeah, like, I'm not. Well, you are in some way. Yeah, you're, right. you're not just you're going not ma- No one, no, they didn't magically, you didn't find $1.5 $1. billion <laughs> under the boundary stones. That's funny. That's right. That someone, didn't someone happen. Needs to, someone needs to make that up. Yeah. Like, there's no there's no magic that occurred here to make this money appear. Like, it's coming in some way. My fear is that we're paying, the paying customers, we're paying for it. Right. That we're going to end up paying a premium to go to these games mm-hmm. out there. Right. And it's not going to be easy. And then, you know, the other issues, which are less of an issue, but are a real issue, is traffic's a problem. Metro is not accessible. It's accessible, but, but it's not. they want to be the solution. I mean, they want to be the solution. <laughs> that and, you know, and, you know, the other one, and this is because I don't live in Virginia. I don't want to take a position on this. How do the people who live there really actually feel about it? And that's their that's their position to take. Do we want this in our backyard? Yeah. They have to make they have to make their minds up. For me, I, I don't care. It doesn't bother me. Like, it's not in my backyard, right. so I don't really care. I wouldn't want a stadium on MacArthur Boulevard personally. <laughs> I don't need Glen Echo That'd be Park. great, actually. Actually, yeah. <laughs> If they put, it actually if they would put, be pretty silly. If you turn Glen Echo Park into Capital One Arena, I might like it. I'll I walk down, the games. man. I'll probably, I probably will pay $500 St- a ticket. Extend that purple yeah. line out, playa. We're yeah. good. <laughs> that 7 Eleven's going to be hot late at night. They might get their there. alcohol license yeah. back. Oh, or, yeah. That's way inside. Oh, but. yeah. Uh, so here's what Robert Poland said. Um, and this was, And this is where he's kind of leaning on the legacy and the reason why they're there. Yeah. And he said this. My dad knew that the property values were going to go up in the neighborhood, but he chose not to buy anything. He said he's going to benefit just fine, and he wanted other people to also benefit from the move. This is from Landover to Capital One Arena, what is now Capital Run Arena initially. He said, yeah. My dad chose not to take advantage of the upcoming increase in property values, which stands in stark contrast to what we're seeing. I'm just hoping that a little piece of that can rub off on Ted and his partners. Ted and his partners are very wealthy people, and of course it's their teams and their building, but they can also think about contributing and maybe making some relative sacrifice financially. (laughs) He's laying out the, you know, we did not do this. Like It benefited us. Clearly, don't yeah, yeah. don't don't sure. we, we understand it benefited us right. like by moving to where we did. It benefited us, but we didn't take all of it. Mm-hmm. That's right. Like the learners moved down to the Navy Yard. They owned a lot of that property. That's right. Yes. <laughs> like part of the whole they might sell the thing to me was kind of like, well, the real estate developers, they already developed the real estate. Right. So what's there really left to do down on to the there next one. Yeah. on to the next one? And you're not moving out of that ballpark for a long time. So you're kind of just. Stewards of a baseball team now. That's do you right. really want to do that? Right. And maybe they thought about it for a while. And as it turns out, they like the baseball team. They're keeping it. What Ted is doing is he's taking advantage of something that's going to exponentially change 
uh, what the teams are worth. This also kind of puts into perspective, why did the country of Qatar want to give them money in advance? For what exactly? And when they tried to portray that as, well, they're investing in the Monumental Sports Network, I sat there and I'm like, oh, really? Right. You're, you, Oh, the country of Qatar is going to invest in the business model that exponentially means that the regional sports network, most of which are going bankrupt around the country, that that actually is going to be the right thing to put $400 million into? Mm-hmm. Of course not. So this is now putting into perspective a little bit where that investment probably made the most sense to them. Oh, you're going to get a giant new land out in Virginia. All of a sudden, their investment is worth exponentially more because the teams are worth exponentially more. Yeah. Right? Right. Right. Doesn't that seem to make... I never understood why he took that money. That's right. Right. Yeah, exactly. Why? Yeah, right. What did he need it for? Right. Well... Why? You know what? It's going into the network. We don't know what it's being spent on, though. Correct. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Correct. So that is, you know, I don't, I don't want to accuse anybody of, of anything. Of course not. No. But all of the sudden, that money that's never really been explained or why that they are an investor here or why that they wanted this, and why did they want it? Think about that for a second. Why would the country of Qatar want to invest in the Wizards and Capitals? Right. How does that make any sense? Mm -hmm. Like, okay, like public investment funds are buying into sports. Yes, they're buying into leagues. That's right. Yes. They haven't bought it. This is the first time they've bought into literal teams. Is is their value going to exponentially change? Well, I guess they're all kind of going up, so maybe, but they have bought it at the height. That doesn't really make any sense, does it? Oh, wait a minute. Right. Right. All of a sudden, they have this new footprint that's going to exponentially change the values of the organization and the land that comes with it. So that's making a lot more sense now why that showed up all of a sudden. Right next to an airport. Yeah. Uh, So Robert Poland is trying to lean into... Use your better judgment here. We we know that you're a capitalist, but you actually have a heart, which is why Ted is expressing his, I can't believe people are mad at me. (laughs) Which is still... (laughs) Which is still like... You you can't believe they're mad at you. Once again, like, what do you mean you can't? Like you not, for all the reasons yeah. we described, you knew people were going to be mad at Once you. Once again, the last team that moved out of the city into the suburbs, people didn't freak out, and it was a disaster. So they're watching it happen again and freaking out, hoping they can make a difference in all of it. Yes. By the way, did you did you hear one of his like gripes was about one of the restaurants having an outdoor streetery? Did you hear about this? No. One of his gripes was he's not a partner with the restaurants around there, Capital One Arena. He's just a, you know, like a facilitator by having the games, right? And I guess there's a ramen shop right across the street from where the garage is. Mm-hmm. I don't remember the name of the restaurant, to be completely honest. Sure. But they have a streetery now. And their streetery takes up maybe three parking spots. Okay. And one of his complaints was all of these restaurants are taking up some of the parking down by the arena. And that's not beneficial to me. Um, and everyone was kind of like, someone took a picture and was like, are these the spots you're talking about? It's three of them. Wow. And so you're like, once again, it's one of these things where I feel like he keeps overstretching himself on some of these complaints. Where it's like, well, remember, remember he was complaining about the music being too loud? And it's like, you're right above a metro stop. Those people have been playing music there forever. Like, I don't know what you want me to say there. They're, like, they're having a hard time explaining why they want to do this <laughs> other than it's just enormously beneficial to them. Yes, yes, exactly. And nobody wants to hear that. Right. Now, if you want to go, and here's, and here's where Louise from Richmond comes in, <laughs> where she's like, build it yourself. Right, right. Go right. ahead. Yeah, right. Actually, right. go build it yourself. Like, that is a good deal for us. That's right. Go build it yourself, right. of which they're not going to do. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, I'd go, but you just got $400 million from your friends in the Middle East. That's right. So what are you doing with that? All right. What was that for? Why did you get this investment? Well, now it's becoming clear why they got that investment. Well, yeah, especially it's becoming they, very clear. Especially because just on paper, this isn't me knocking anyone over there, but Monumental Network hasn't added anything new since they've taken that money. It's still the same no. Um, I shouldn't say anything, but they've added a couple satellite programs like a Caps show and a Wizards show, and but that Rachel Nichols show is the only thing that runs regularly. But you and I, like, if you if you go look at the lineup, there's not much there, you know. So they're not going to do twenty four seven. This isn't we're not in a live television business anymore. There's right. no appointment viewing outside of games. 
Like, and, you know, listen, I'm sorry, but, like, I don't need to be an expert on this, but I've been in it long enough to know that is not a good business That's model correct, right yes. now. Right. Now, they may figure it out and do better and get more subscribers and all that stuff. And I don't know what their numbers are since they've rolled this thing out to try to get people to subscribe to it, which is really a younger generation because most people my age or older still do have cable television or some form of it. And it's bundled. Yeah. So I don't need to act. I can still watch Caps and Wizards games. I don't need this. There may be a day, you know, where, you know, maybe I do cut the cord entirely and then I have to think about it and then we'll have to see where that goes. I'd like to know where that is. Right. And, you know, like I when they announced this and said they were doing this and all the things they were going to do with it, I was like laughing about it. I'm like, what? are you watching market conditions in media right now? Like there is no market for these shows. You're going to spend millions of dollars producing all these things. That's going to get a scant rating. Like go ahead. I'm in this business. Throw me a show. If you want, I know it's going to last six months, but go ahead. (laughs) Like, because I already know what the score is with all of this stuff. And, but you know, it's, your money to spend, and if you think you have figured out something that every other regional sports network can't seem to figure out right now, go ahead. I don't right. want to stop you. I am all for more money in the sports industry and sports media, but I laughed at it. Yep. And there's no way the country of Qatar gave them $400 million to build out a regional sports network. Mm-hmm. No chance. Right, right. Well, yeah, we know No that. chance. <laughs> uh, Robert Pola goes on to say this. The same mortgage deal uh, that is why his father had to take on an investor a quarter century ago. Paul had said his father turned down better financial offers to keep the teams in Landover or move them to Northern Virginia at the time or Baltimore because he saw the potential in downtown Washington. And Paul had said this. He turned them all down. He took on a huge mortgage to build the arena where he thought it belonged, right in the middle of the city, to do something for the city. <laughs> In his letter to Leontes, Poland noted that his father agreed to the deal with the city because he didn't want to overburden the city with financial obligations that could deprive them of funds to pay for essential things that tax revenue are meant to cover. For example, school teachers, firefighters, hospitals, and the like. Oh, man. And then he, like, the, the summation this, this was... This is what you and I were getting at, though. Like, why Abe was never really grilled over his teams. Because yep. he wasn't like every other billionaire owner that he was philanthropic, that he did see the light when it came to helping the city out. Like, (laughs) this is why Ted gets raked over the coals with the Wizards. It's because he's not doing the same things that Abe did, or at least even gives the impression. Well, they do have in common, the team hasn't won very much, so they have that in common. But you can look the other way when you see a billionaire owner helping out the community. I don't even know why I complain about them winning. They sell a lot of tickets. Right. <laughs> I mean, it's a silly, like, it actually doesn't really matter. They probably right. listen to this and they're like, you guys complain about us winning. And I'm like, I'm not talking to you about you guys very much this year because it's so abhorrently bad that for me and my purposes, there's just nothing really to talk Denny's about. Denny's cracking. Denny is cracking. <laughs> I will admit that. Denny is cracking. Here's the, here's the summation line that I thought was really incredible. Mm. Robert Poland says this. I'm sure you recall you pledged to me and my father 25 long years ago that when we first met, you were bidding on the caps and part ownership of the arena and the Wizards, that you fully intended to be a community leader and a mensch. You made that clear then, and in this way, you intended to follow in my father's footsteps. And he's basically saying you're breaking that promise by doing this. This is not. He's saying my father's rolling around in his grave going, this is not what I intended for these organizations. I wanted to be a centerpiece of the city. Now... In fairness, that was 25 years ago. There's a lot of different things that were happening in downtown Washington. It was vibrant. It was full. The offices were full. There was no pandemic. The crime rates were whatever they were. I think that that stuff is cyclical in general. More people were living in Chinatown, too. A ton of people were living down there because that's 10 years ago. Not unlike what happened with the Navy Yard, like it became a hot place for young people to move into, and property values did go up, and all these restaurants and bars did come in because it was an anchor. And a lot of them are closing now, and there is a lot of crime, and I blame a lot of things for that. And I think the city leaders have failed him in some ways, which is why I'm still, I'm understanding where he's coming from. I do know that what this is is extraordinarily beneficial to him and him alone, and like I don't want to you know, kid myself about that. And I do agree on some level that to remain competitive in these sports, you do need to increase your footprint. Everybody is doing that. So I understand this. Like, I, I get it. He is kind of landlocked down there. Unless he can acquire other buildings to do other things in downtown D.C., he is a little bit landlocked. So I understand that. So I 
I understand his thinking, and I get why this is enticing, and they're offering him so much money if it goes through. It's going to be hard for him to turn that down, but there is, uh, you know, now you've got an appeal. Oh, that is quite an appeal. My dad sold you these teams because he never thought you'd do this. That's the ultimate I'm not wow. mad. I'm just disappointed. Yeah, it is. I mean, and I don't blame him. I'm sure the conversations were like that, and this is, this goes back to what you and I have been talking about, though. Ted waves the flag more than anyone in this city about how it's a great place to live and he has Georgetown games down at his arena and he has always waved the flag here. Yes. But then when another jurisdiction came along and said, you guys want to move over here? He didn't even give DC a chance to negotiate. They like, gave him an like, offer he couldn't refuse. Well, in it's the, so much money. In that, um, It's so much land. It's so much money. It, there, in that post article from over the weekend, he and Muriel were going back and forth, and I guess there was an email exchange of we should meet in person. And when they met in person and Muriel gave the, I guess it was the $250 because I think they went from what? Like 240 or 250 to like 400 something, whatever the number was. Yeah. The first number, Ted said, according to the reports in the post, that he said, had you offered this earlier, I might have accepted it, but I really just brought you in here to tell you I'm going to Virginia. That's how it went. So they weren't really negotiating with them. But he also has, in fairness to him, he has also expressed his concerns about what's happening sure. in and around his arena for a right. long time and has felt like that the city leaders have let him down. Right. Now, I don't know what they're exactly supposed to do about it, but they need to do something. Right. Like, they're only now just making a, a decision about federal workers being at home and stuff. That like, was That's a killer. Right. Correct. That's and like, a killer. And I think that's what the city was, like, waiting for, too. Sometimes some of these decisions, you know how this city works. You could ask for something, but you're not getting an answer for two, four, or six years, right? Depending on what's going on. So uh, Here's Louise from Richmond, the <laughs> senator who's so far putting her hand up saying, get out of my way. And right. yesterday we read her tweet where she said, I'm 80 years old. I worked at a shipyard and basically I'll kick your ass. Come on down here and find out. Said, I'm a woman. I'm yeah. 80. Come, come on down here and find <laughs> out, which I loved. She wrote this one. And she is calling it the Glen Dome, which I love. <laughs> the Glen Dome financing is based on ticket sales to the new arena i oh told you my. i told you they don't want to talk to me anymore because i was on to them immediately <laughs> they don't want to talk to me they don't want to talk they wanted to talk to me after i came out in support of it they've gone radio silent on me since you want to know why because i'm asking the right question how much are the tickets going to be you know what they are yep. you know what they are yep. they're going to be exponentially higher and you don't want to tell anybody that that's who's going to pay for this. People like me who actually want to go to your games, and it's going to cost me $800 to go with a family of four to a Caps-Devils game on a Tuesday night. Right. Sorry, not sorry. I'm going to watch it on TV, mm -hmm. and I'm not going to buy your subscription because <laughs> I don't need to. Go yell at YouTube for that. <laughs> she wrote this. The Glen Dome financing is based on ticket sales to the new arena. Looking at the projections that uh -huh. appears to include Wizards playoff games. Wizards playoffs? I was still at the <sighs> shipyard the last time they were relevant in that discussion, and they were called the Bullets. I mean, technically <laughs> wrong, but a good, a good zinger. <laughs> technically wrong, but a good zinger. <laughs> they were a game away from the Eastern Conference Finals. They were. I mean, one like, time. One time. One time in the last 50 years. If John years. Wall doesn't break yeah. his hand, we all are wondering what if. One time in the last 45 years, no, they course. were one game away <laughs> no, from I, being in the Eastern Conference I'm Finals. Just saying. We're clinging on to 2005 Redskins teams over here. Like, I'm just, oh, I'm just saying. Holy moly. Uh, and now we've got the latest opposition comes from the Northern Virginia Labor Union. Okay. They're not fond of this either. I bet. Because they I, have put out a statement saying they are against this. Mm -hmm. This isn't good. It's well, starting to ramp up in a way that I'm a little surprised. Let's see. Uh, here's what they say. Virginia labor unions oppose the monumental JBG Smith Arena and Entertainment District Plan. The AFL-CIO and its member unions representing uh, tens of thousands of workers announced their opposition today to the proposed arena Quote, construction and hospitality jobs in the campus privately owned entertainment district will be low wage jobs because the developer would not accept any labor agreements. OK, so they're basically going, you got to show us the money before we're going to show up to work for you. And the way it stands right now, you've got a sweetheart deal on how this thing's going to be built. Well, count us out. Oh, <laughs> Metro's pissed. The labor unions are pissed. Yeah. 80 year old Louise from the shipyard is pissed. Muriel's pissed. 
I think a lot of people in Alexandria say, are probably old, mixed. Fifty year old Karen is not happy either down there. Fifty year old Karen hates it. Yeah. <laughs> hates it. Right. The other thing too is I keep pointing to this. They keep saying, "Oh, it's going to bring all these jobs." Yet they did. What are you talking about? Yet they did say out loud, anyone that has a job at the arena will, of course, be welcome to work at the new one. How is that a new job? It's I, the same job. What? And it, and you know how it what works. new jobs are you talking about? Right. Stop that. The taxpayers are paying for it in some way. Yep. I don't know how, and yeah. you're not going to be able to explain it to me because it might as well be a crypto. Yeah. I don't know what it is, but you, yes, I. I know it's happening. I don't know how. They're paying for it in Ted This is why you're a billionaire and I'm not. I don't know how you do that. But I do know that I'm the one footing the bill one way or the other. I don't know how. This is why I'm not rich. I don't understand this. (laughs) But I understand enough to know that I'm paying for it. That's how you buy a beer with Ted coin. Yeah, Ted coin. It would be our currency. That's it. Ted coin. Ted coin. I would actually invest in Ted coin. Only if I can get some physically. <laughs> Only if I can get physical Ted coin. We're going to have a mining expedition for Ted coin. Go dig under the boundary stones. You may find some. Ten years there's Zach coin. <laughs> I'm proud of myself Zach on that Doge. one. Zach Doge. Zach <laughs> Doge. Ted coin and Zach Doge. Yeah, Doge is its own thing. Though. Oh, man. Ted coin. Oh, like, don't you remember man, Toys R Us used to have physical dollars? <laughs> yeah. Jeffrey Bucks. Jeffrey Bucks. I remember Jeffrey Bucks. So, I might have one somewhere. That's a keeper. Ted, Ted coin. coin. Ted coin. You'll need eight of those to get a Coca-Cola, <laughs> sir. How much are these worth? Well, today they're worth $28. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> Tomorrow they're worth 55 cents. <laughs> I, no, I know how this would work. At Wizards game, a beer, a beer is four Ted coins. Yeah. At a Caps game, they're like seven Ted coins. Seven Ted coins. Well, how much are these? Well, it depends on the minute. You need to check the market. Right now, it's worth 0.5 cents, but tomorrow it's worth $38. <laughs> Who knows? It's like the office, shroot bucks. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> oh, man. God, what, what is your odds on this now? I had it at 90-10 as of three weeks ago. I dropped it to 80-20. I'm going to go 75-25 today because it's ramping up now that people are really putting up the roadblocks on I think, this thing. I think it's 65-35. I think there is a legitimate one-third chance this does not go through. Or Virginia comes back. I had 90-10 as of three weeks ago. <laughs> I was like, I'm conv- like uh, nothing's a certainty, but this felt like nothing was going to get in the way of it. And now I don't know if I believe it anymore. I, I, I joked with somebody yesterday saying, don't mess with a suburban housewives neighborhood. Seriously. That's right. I mean, it's, the, it's uh, I don't know what else to say. Like, you saw how fast. People organized when it was like, you're doing what to our neighborhood? Well, that that is going to happen anywhere in any situation. If you don't put if you don't put the stadium in the middle of nowhere where it affects nobody, but it'll affect somebody. But the guy with the cabin in the woods, he's one guy like. But if you but if you put it in any vibrant community, you will get that's opposition. That's like, trust me, there are going to be a lot of people down by RFK that are not going to be pleased and are going to try to mobilize to stop the commanders from getting a stadium there. I think they'll fail, but like they will, that will happen. Of course that will happen. There's already a stadium there too. Like they can't like that one's like the cookie cutter has already been dropped on that one. So I understand that. Yeah, But but they're going to argue we could do something else with this is what they're going to argue. argue, We don't have to have a stadium. We get to redevelop it. We get to redevelop it in a way that helps the community. We don't believe a stadium is that. And they're really going to go. Sorry. Of course. But in this, in this case, you know how this works. The, you know, the, Suburban family, uh, uh-uh. uh, you ain't you ain't yeah. messing with my trader. Excuse me, you're not messing with my Trader Joe's run at 11 a.m. You know we we'll like, have a Trader Joe's. Yeah. It'll take Ted Coin. <laughs> Ted Coin. <laughs> trader Ted's. That's where I sell my biscuits Stop. and baskets, Stop. Joe. <laughs> Ted Coin. We almost made it through. Not, not a lot biscuits. Of yeah. <laughs> I'm moving to Old Town Joe. All right. Old Town uh, Joe has a good ring. Old to it. Town Joe is good. Yeah. It's good good wine down there. He's going to like that, it. That's right. Good wine bar. It's the, the good morning, good afternoon, good night yeah. bar. King Street. Oh, boy. It's going to be good down there. Joe's going to be walking up and down those little cobblestone streets. Oh, yeah. I wonder this. Here's where, if I'm DC, I'm starting to mobilize a little bit because you're starting to see how loud people are about wanting to keep it in the city. And I, I've said from the get go, the worst part about this has been the imagery for this. Ted hasn't shied away saying it's going to benefit his empire, right? But I've said they should have just pivoted and said, we want to do all these things and we don't have the land for it. 
Well, there are literal vacant buildings sitting in DC right now. Mm-hmm. And if I'm Bowser, I'm trying to gather a building or two and go, we might not have it all in gift the same in the same area. You gift it to him. But we can right, I wouldn't say gift, but make a deal. Make a deal and say we can put your monumental studio here. We can build you a new practice facility here that's a couple floors and maybe we have the ice rink and the basketball court or yeah. whatever you want to do. But if I'm Bowser right now, you your counterpoint to him should be, okay, if you wanted all this land, we need some time to do it, but I have a building over here and I have a building over here. And then all of a sudden, Monumental sprawls across the city a little bit. That if you want to go watch Caps practice, it's somewhere else in the city. It's not in Virginia anymore. If you want to go watch the Wizards practice, not that they really do that, but they've done it in training camp, you can go over here. Monumental is going to be in another part of the city. Is it all really close to each other? No, not really, but hey, man, have you ever been to this city? It's pretty easy to traverse. Yes, I mean, traffic sucks, but you can you can make it happen. They did this at the Star, too, which is outside of where the Dow Stadium is, but like they put in a football field there, and they play high school games out yeah. of it. They do all sorts right. of things with it. So if the Wizards had this great practice court that had some st- some seating, they could play major high school games there. That's they right. could play some college games there if they really wanted to. Like They could do things like that. One of the organizations that the Caps have always worked with, and I've loved it, is the Fort DuPont Cannons, the, the hockey team that plays downtown, and that they're facilities are just not that great right. I, I believe they've helped them renovate that but same thing you could then open up the rink when the caps aren't practicing for youth leagues or tournaments or whatever and then all of a sudden you still have your rinks in virginia that you can do whatever the hell you want with i just don't too. want him to go nuclear if it falls apart Me too. that's what of course i'm scared not. about of that's course what i'm scared not. about but you and he I... seems to have like drawn a line in the sand and he's thin-skinned and it scares me but, that's what scares me but you and i know this though neither commissioner would let him move out of the city i don't think so not you know what i mean move from the area is what really what I mean there. They neither one would let him do that. Mm. Bettman would never let a team that's been somewhere for fifty years and been brought up the way it has. I caps. would I would pay a lot to watch Louise and Ted fight. I would <laughs> I'm not sure who'd win. <laughs> Who do you think would win that? I got my money on Louise. Louise is eighty, man. Have you seen her talk? Yeah, Ted. She should run for president, not the other guy. He she's spry and ready to go. <laughs> she is spry. If Louise doesn't win in two rounds, Ted. Yeah, okay, she, fine, Ted. She's got she to make quick Is it work. MMA? <laughs> I'm going to kick her legs out. That's right. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I think Ted wins overall. <laughs> but I feel like if she just uh, gave it all she had for two rounds, yeah, maybe. 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 All right, let me take a quick break. Uh, our advisor, Rick Spielman, is on tape saying who he likes in the draft. That's right. So we're going to listen to that next. Brand Boys is Joey Spence, 630 Sports Capital. Uh, at 4 o'clock, I'll get into what's going on with Justin Fields, which is he's done the modern athlete thing, which is unfollow the team he plays for <laughs> on Instagram, which we all read into. He will be traded, which means we're not going to get Caleb Williams. We all assume that. Now, that doesn't mean the Bears couldn't select Drake May or Jaden Daniels. Possibility, too. Of course. I think their fans will freak out if they take Jaden Daniels because he's a facsimile of Fields in the skill set. So they'd be like, right. what are we doing here other than starting the clock over again? That's right. Williams and May are different than Fields. They're differentiated. And I think everyone seems to be falling in line with Williams will be the first to go. And we'll see how that goes. Right. And so that's why we're going to, when you hear the start of the answer to this question, Rick Spielman, who's been part of the commander's advisory committee on the hiring of Adam Peters and eventually the hiring of Dan Quinn. So I'm going to listen to what he has to say. As you should. Was on Pro Football Focus, and he was asked, who is the number two quarterback on his board? And the premise is Caleb Williams is gone at number one maybe even some others in the top 15 where, where do you stand on the 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 second best quarterback in the league in the uh, in the draft yeah i like drake may a lot uh i had the ability and uh to watch him play live down in miami last year and um his size i think he is very athletic i think he has arm talent i think he's another one he did not have the same talent around him this year he made some poor decisions, turning the ball over or forcing the ball where it probably could have kept it. Uh, and then Jaden Daniels is an incredible story coming from where he started at at uh, ASU, uh, Arizona State, where he was still developing. You can say, God, this guy will never be a first-round pick to when he transferred into LSU and the strides he made from last year to this year and uh, how much better he has improved. So, I think all three of these uh, are going to be very successful quarterbacks in the league. I think there's a drop off into that next tier, and it'll be interesting to see how many 
actually do go in the first round. And Steve, if I can ask you a question. Right. We don't need to, Steve doesn't need to talk. Okay, sorry, Club, Steve. Club ends anyway. Yeah, my sorry. bad, Steve. Yeah. Okay, uh, so he didn't totally endorse Drake May, but said him first, mm -hmm. which I think matters here. And I think that there's going to be a lot of jockeying over the next month or two over what that looks like. Um, it's becoming clear that, you know, the Bears, or at least Justin Fields is acting this way, that it's heading in the direction where the Bears have made a decision. And I think we're going to actually find that out at the Combine or around the Combine. I bet Justin Fields is traded, like, within the next, I don't know, if they get the right deal for him, I think they're just going to well, move I think, off. I think that's what's going to happen because free agency is about to begin. So teams who want to acquire him have to go do it now. That's what I think is going to happen at the combine. I, I think so too. I think, like, I think it's going to happen fast. You're going to talk. You're going to see that they're going to be start talk, talk, start talking with teams. No doubt. Year. Yeah. Right. Because once free agency opens, well, only one team is going to get Kirk Cousins, and only one team is going to get who Russell Wilson yep. or whoever else is going to be available to be acquired. Well. I would put Fields above, maybe not Kirk, but like off at Achilles at his age and the price point, I think I would take Fields. Risk That's, reward is the same, yes. I would say. The only thing you don't have to deal with with Cousins is there is no draft compensation you have to give up. You can just sign yeah. him, but only one team is going to do it. You have to give up something for Fields. I feel like it's going to be a, a pretty decent price tag for him. The commanders aren't going to do that, I don't think. I don't think the Patriots would do it unless they really, really want him. Because they could, geez, they could sit at three. Yep, and then draft get Marvin Fields, Harrison. draft Marvin Harrison. Right. If they give up, not obviously they're not going to give up the number three overall pick for him, but they right. could give up their second round pick if that's enough of a premium for Chicago. I think you're going to be surprised what they end up getting Chicago. People keep talking about, oh, they're going to get this. I don't know about that. Like of the free agent quarterbacks, he's young. He's got a lot of promise, multi skill set. I think they're going to get a first round pick for him from somebody. I think you're going to be surprised. I like they keep saying they're going to get like a second round pick. I don't think so. I think someone's going to pay the premium and it's going to ramp up fast. I think yeah. that's what I think is going to happen with him. So on this thing with Spielman, I'm listening closely because he is advising them. That's right. So and he's saying may. And I think you're going to hear a lot of jockeying over the next, you know, four or five a couple months as we head into the draft. Because both of them is an exponential difference to what they want to do. I also will be interested to hear, because we already heard this with Williams, at least there was smoke of where do you want to be. That's right. Does Drake May prefer New England or Washington? Does right. Jaden Daniels prefer New England or Washington or something else? Like, you don't know. You don't know what's going on behind the scenes about what they would like to see happen. And maybe they're just happy landing where they land. Clearly being the higher picked person means more money guaranteed. So you want to land higher as but are they jockeying to be places I don't know? And the Drake May one, and Daniel Jeremiah had a, had a mock draft, and I, I follow him because him, Mel, like they're the ones that I really watch because it's not just they're evaluating them. They have sources. Yeah. So they, that's why their mock drafts mean more than the average person who, no offense to the people who do really good work on the internet or work for PFF or whoever and do this stuff. They don't have the sources that these guys have. And some of these mock drafts that they put together are also based on what they're hearing from their sources. And they're saying that these people are saying this about them. And that's why this person will probably end up here. Daniel Jeremiah also said Drake May was a second quarterback. Got it. So I was pretty convinced if it wasn't Caleb, we'd go Jaden Daniels. And I'm not totally like, I haven't talked to you. Know, like they're not revealing anything yet. Like they're, they're pulling that we just got in the building. Thing. That's right. So, yeah, and yeah. so they're not revealing. And I don't blame them. They're not revealing anything at this point. No leanings whatsoever yet. But now that's the second person here. Spielman who's advising them. Daniel Jeremiah who said, I'd take Drake May. So if you are, <laughs> this is going to be divisive. Because, okay, let's just take Caleb off the board, right? Because he's right. gone. The Bears have made the decision. He's gone. They're not even going to take our phone call about it. And we're not giving up three first-round picks to move up one spot to do it, okay? Because right? we all agree there is a price. I mean, like, I want him. I think he's special. But I also don't want to leverage the entire organization to do it. I think it, it may to like, if the price is right, I'm all in for doing that. But it sounds like you're not going to get them to do it unless the price is absolutely ridiculous. That's right. Right? Yep. Absolutely ridiculous. Okay, so if we take them at face value and that's what it is, this is going to be a heck of a discussion amongst our fan base because it's two very different quarterbacks. Very different. Yep. Right. May can move. He's mobile, but he ain't Jaden Daniels. He ain't that. Yeah, yeah. Right. He ain't that. Jaden Daniels might be Fields, might be Lamar. I don't know. 
Right. Maybe. May might be Herbert. Right. Might and, be Daniel Jones. And, I don't know. And we don't have the offensive line to stand him up either. No. Because I think if Jaden Daniels. Oh, we're going to address that in free agency. Oh, I'm convinced that like yeah. that's happening. Sure, but you don't. It doesn't up. take a genius to figure out that some of that money needs to be spent on a couple of high tier yeah. guards. Well, I was going to say, well, at one least guard. a guard, one guard, at least uh, a guard. And if you can get a tackle, tackle. yeah, you right. know, there's some I, I haven't done this yet. And I should soon on the air. I could go through the roster and tell you what I think is going to happen with some guys. Logan Thomas and, and Charles Leno could be cap cuts here. Yeah. But in Charles Leno's case, because there's significant savings. You don't have a backup tackle. Right. They don't even have one in the system. That's right. So I don't think you can just cut the guy unless you know what you're doing. Yeah. And left tackles are hard to get on the open market. Of course. Yeah. So we'll see. Uh, the one other thing that I saw, there was a report, uh, and it was from a real reporter, who had said the Jets covet Sam Howell, and they'd like to acquire him to be the backup to Aaron huh. Rodgers okay. and hope to develop him over the next couple of years to turn into that. And I would say this about Howell. I'm in no rush to trade him That's anywhere. Right. right. Unless they're. Why throwing, would I want to trade him? Unless they're throwing you a second or a third rounder. I if mean, they're going to give up a second round pick and we're taking a rookie quarterback, I will take the second course. round pick. Yeah, right. But if they're offering me a fifth round pick, he makes no money, has two years left on his contract, actually can play, and he's got a new coach, so let's let him reset here. I'm in no rush trading him. That said, if we take Drake May, they are very close friends. Yeah. That is going to be awkward. Right. And I wonder how he would feel about being the backup to him with practically no chance of ever supplanting That's him. That's right. Yeah, right. And exactly. if he did, how awkward that would be. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. It's no win So situation. Right. So if we're taking Drake May, I would actually argue we should move Sam Howell, especially if there's a market. Right. If we're taking Jaden Daniels, I'm not trading him unless you're giving us something that I wouldn't expect to get. Right. Why this, would I do that? This is not unlike the Bears, though. If they move Sam Howell early, then we know who they're taking. Yes. Because I feel like it's the same thing. The Jets are going, we could sign a veteran right now with free agency coming up, but right. if we want him, we'd like to get him right now. I got to tell you, like, Hal at his price point for two years, that's a premium pick if you want him. Right, right. Now, would someone actually give you a second-round pick for him? That seems like a hard sell to a fan base sure. to right. do that. And I'd listen to it if that's what's there. Assuming that they're like, well, we'll give you a fourth round pick. No, thank you. Right. He's a really good backup quarterback. Why would I trade him to you? That's right. All right, we'll take a quick break. Bray Watson Show, he's been 630 Sports Capital. Been a lot of complaining about the All Star game from everybody over the last couple of days because the guys didn't try. Even Adam Silver was ticked off about it. <laughs> well, people are screaming and yelling. I'm one of them. I'm like, this is ridiculous. If you don't care, why do I care? Right. And I did see someone tweet, you know, get over it. The ratings went up. And that's, oh. it's, I don't know whether that's true or not. I'd have to go to like John Orand or yeah, someone yeah, like yeah. that who follows that stuff to know whether they're Richard Deitch, you know, that follows that stuff to know if that was true yeah. or not. But if that is the case, then we're all suckers. Right. You know, eventually we're the ones that need to tune it out to oh, get yeah. them to stop. You oh, know, and yeah. like, I love the NBA All-Star game. I love seeing all those guys on the court at the same time. It's like the, it's the All-Star game where you get five Hall of Famers, like playing against one another. Like, it's incredible. And, but when they don't try... Or I'd rather them just go to a dunking booth and dunk each other. That's like, that's right. what I would rather see. Yeah. Oh, no, dude, it's like, the same thing that I've been trying to put out on social media lately with everyone bitching about the fanatic stuff yeah. and MLB. And I've said, you guys know things change if you just stop buying the stuff, right? Right. You just have to stop doing it. Right. <laughs> things change when yes. you actually put your dollars just back stop in your pocket. Doing it. Right. Right. All right. In the meantime, is the second half of the season, well, we're beyond that, yeah, but, yeah, but essentially the second half of the season begins. Doc Rivers is under the microscope. He took over for Adrian Griffin. That was a surprising, well, maybe not for the Bucks locker room, but and maybe not for local Milwaukee, but considering what their record was, mm -hmm. to fire a first-year head coach in the middle of the season to turn around and give it to Doc, and then Doc left his job or whatever, and it's not going very well. Right. Um, and so Rivers was— Tell the was, whole story. He was— <laughs> Tell the whole story. He's been saying this is harder than it looks oh, and he all said, that he's, stuff. I think yeah. he said in the first, uh, like, his opening press conference, like, I wouldn't wish this on my worst yeah. enemy or something. Then why'd it's you like, take calm it? Calm down, Doc. Then why'd you take it? <laughs> he get, he get You're me. sitting next to Breed and Doris. You don't have to take this <laughs> right. job. You could turn it down right. if you think it's that bad. I'm sorry, are you getting yeah. a team that has Giannis and Dame on it? I think yeah. you are. <laughs> so, you know, so he's already trying to distance himself from what appears <laughs> to be a bad chemistry locker room yeah. that's what sounds like is happening right mm -hmm. because what other reason could there be they have too many good players that's and right. their record is still good but they're not winning very much right now so Stephen a and jj reddick did full Stephen a jj reddick they're done with him making up excuses oh no 
Oh, no. Something happened or that uh, it muted. I don't know what happened. You'll just have to trust me. You'll just have to trust me. I don't know what happened. All right. Well, you know, it's better if you hear him say it, but it's fine. Just trust me. He killed him. Oh, hold on. Oh. The tab was muted. For oh. years. What's the trend? The trend is always making excuses. Get Doc, we get it. Taking over a team in the middle of the season is hard. It's hard. We get it. Just like getting traded in the middle of the season is hard for a player. We get it. Mm-hmm. But it's always an excuse. It's always throwing your team under the bus. They lose to Memphis. Oh, it's his players. Fun. Memphis was playing G League guys and two-way guys. And then you look at his quotes over the weekend. Now he wants to take credit for the James Harden trade to the Clippers working out. He wants credit for that. There's just no, there's never accountability with that guy. Well, there's never say, accountability. Well, let me say a couple of things. Number one, that's a very serious thing to say, and we should take it serious. For I, you oh, because we should take uh, it serious. You can take it serious. He no, no, seemed no, no. pretty let serious. Finish. Let yeah. me finish. We yeah. should take it serious because you played for him. So for you to say something like that, it matters. That's number one. Number two, I'm going to say this because Doc, need, Doc Rivers needs to hear, and I got love for him, but he needs to hear this, okay? Just go out there and coach because here's the deal. You were playing an advisor's role in Milwaukee. And all of a sudden, now you're the head coach. Mm -hmm. People haven't brought that up. And the more Mm -hmm. you talk about how difficult this is, the more it brings attention to, wait a minute. Nobody's trying to hear that. You got the job, go win. Go win. It's just that simple. Because it didn't happen in L.A. all of those years with the Clippers. It didn't happen. Didn't happen in Philadelphia. And now, this, I've said this, J.J., the second he got the job. If Doc Rivers doesn't, I'm not talking about this season because he came in there halfway through, but if Doc Rivers between this year and next season doesn't win, I think it'll be his last head coaching job in the NBA. Well, I mean, I think that he's running out of teams to coach. <laughs> sure, I mean, yeah, he's, yeah, like, yeah. he's made the rounds like nobody's made the rounds. Um, okay, I want to say this about it. Like, I agree it comes off as just an excuse, and he did it immediately. But the fact that he was an advisor mm-hmm. and then got the job feels very backstabby. Yeah. And he could sit there and pretend that, like, they forced him to do this. They didn't. That said, I do agree with him here a little bit. To think he'd magically walk in and just turn things around, I think, is a little much. And I think they need to give him a little time. They're not giving him much of a leash for this whole thing. It just looks very backstabby. Yeah. That's what it looks mm-hmm. like to me. That he was like, they're complaining about this guy. And the doc's going, maybe you should get rid of him. Right. And then the owner's going, maybe I should. I've got a coach like you sitting next to me. Would you coach the team? And I don't know. That's hard to do, but yes. Right. I would I would push back on this. This happens in all sports where if there's another option in-house, sometimes you just pivot to that guy. Like the Nationals did this. When Jim Riggleman decided to go to Caddy's <laughs> years ago, what happened? You love bringing that up. It's one of the best stories ever, because that's why. It's an all-time DC it's all-time sports story. It, um, is. it is. And now that I live in walking distance to Caddy's, it's just a great, <laughs> it's the greatest. Uh, but what happened there? Davey Johnson was in the front office, and they kind of, kind of were just like, hey, man, we got a ready-made team yeah. here. Can you just Can you see just do how this? it goes? And then the next year, he won manager of the year. Like, yeah. So... I see Actually, how that first year didn't go particularly well, they well. Were, but they showed signs of being a really good team. They did. Everybody was on him in game manager. They were not happy with the moves he was making that first year. Yeah. But I mean, they, they didn't have a great roster. Like they, they, they went to the next step in 2012. That was what I'm getting at with, with him. So, but I, I think what happens here is they, they're kind of just looking around. This thing's going sideways. Right. Who do we got here? And it's like, I'm here. The weird <laughs> part was it was going sideways at 30 and 13. Yeah. Right. That's the weird part. Right. Like exactly. if they were 20 and 20, I would be like, this has got to change. Yeah. They're too good for that. Yeah. Cause, cause like, that's I, ridiculous. But that wasn't what it was, yeah. which is what made it even stranger. And the other part is Doc is around the team enough. He probably knew what the issue was. He didn't have to take the head coaching gig. Like he could have said, guys, I like doing the TV thing. And no one should have been offended. That's at that the either. thing. Yeah. He had just started that. Yeah. That is yeah. a premier gig. Yep. He could do that for the next 10 to 15 years. Right. By doing this, there's no way ESPN will give it back to him. That's right. Like, oh, that's yeah. over. No, no chance. Yeah. Right. That's over. Because <laughs> they he screwed them. Yes. Correct. Yep. Season one, even Mike Breen made fun of it. Yes, that's right. Yeah, they did the open. <laughs> you know, I think I, uh, something clearly is really wrong there. Otherwise, they wouldn't have done this. Mm-hmm. Their record is emblematic of they're kind of too good to be bad. Right. So even as things are bad, 
they're too good to lose a lot of games. That's they're right. too good for that. Yep. So they needed someone to come in and steady the ship. It's very backstabby that he did it because yep. he was sitting there advising them on the side. But he goes in and now he wants empathy because he hasn't made them play better. And he says, this is hard. But you took the job. Yeah. But I, I do understand clearly something was wrong, which is why they did it in the first place. And to ask him to just fix it also is a little ridiculous. So everybody's wrong here. And at the end of the year, we'll get the true story from somebody will tell us what was going on. Because this is one of the weirdest ones I've seen in a while. First year head coach fired at 30 and 13. Right. Why'd you do that? With two superstars. How, who are, who how are, bad could it have been? With two superstars who are no nonsense either. Right. That aren't hardened. Correct. They, they're the opposite, actually. In fact, neither one comes off as divas That's to right. me. That's Correct. Exactly. Dame did have one quote over the weekend that I thought was a little weird and it's not getting traction because LeBron spoke a million times. Yeah. Um, Dame, they said something along the lines of like, you know, you hit all these game winners in Portland. You know, when's Dame time coming to Milwaukee, like hitting the last second yeah. shot or whatever? He's like, I don't think I can do that anymore. And I was kind of like. He has said something. He's already said things about he wants to go back to Portland to finish yeah, his career. Right. <laughs> That's what Brad wants to do as well. Oh, God. So I'm going to give Brad 8 trillion Ted coin to come back and finish his career. Start the first game in the Virginia arena. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, I bet Lillard is going to sign with them for his final year. Probably. Whenever that comes. Probably. Which, what, like, whatever. Do it. Like, whatever. He'll even come off the bench because he just wants to do it. We've seen this yeah, happen yeah. with, like, so many guys, too. I'm all right like, with KG that. KG went back to Minnesota. I'm all right. Like, <laughs> They had, to, they had to drag him out of Portland. He wanted to be there. He just got tired of hearing, you can't win, you can't That's win, right. where are you going to go? He, just, right. he stopped. He was so sick of being a first take topic. Right. He's right. like, why don't you guys just stop watching Portland basketball for a while? <laughs> That's right. All right, we'll be right back. Pretty much the show is being 630 at Sports Capital. How do you feel about uh, athletes? removing teams that they play for off of Instagram because that's today's news with Justin Fields. He's not the first to do it. Of course. And it's always a sign of guess what's coming. Um, I remember locally, what, who do, who did it here? Russ did it, right? Didn't Russ do it? Or Russ's wife did it or something like, or started following well, the Lakers. It was like right before he got traded, it was something like that. We got noticed and, you know, I think these guys, they know what they're yeah, doing. Russ, they know yeah, it's going to be noticed. You're right. Russ's wife, yeah. Start, you said Russ, and I said Russell Wilson. No, uh, Russell Westbrook. He yes, did that he, here. Yeah, his wife, yes, did start following the Lakers like a day or two before it all went down, I think it was. Yeah. Mm-hmm. There's also the other one that I hate. Kyler did this. Remember when Kyler, before we got the extension, deleted every reference of the Cardinals? Oh, yeah. So, like, all photos. Like, he didn't just unfollow them. He deleted every photo of him in a Cardinals uniform. And it was like, dude, come on. Yeah. Like, like, <laughs> come on. Right. I it's, agree. It's a little, come on. it's a little ridiculous with that, with this fields one. I think I <sighs> pro football talk said it's a shot across the bow of fields of saying, make a decision essentially that like, that it's not a indicative of, of him actually knowing what's going to happen, that it's prove it to me. And then I'll follow you again or something like that. Really? That's what that's, that's what, what that's they what think Florida it is. Said. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it's all leading to clearly they're trading him, and that's why I think we're going to find out about this sooner rather than later, right? Because the teams want to know if they can get him before free agency begins, mm-hmm. and right. definitely before the draft, of course, undoubtedly. Yeah, yeah absolutely. So I actually think this will ramp up fast, and I think it's going to happen pretty soon, right? Um, when can you actually make a trade? Remember. The Redskins did it with Alex Smith, and the league got really pissed. Right. Because the they did week, it yeah. when well, they did it during Super Bowl week, but also you weren't allowed to do it then. Like you couldn't even follow yeah, through league, with yeah, it. The league year, the league open. year <laughs> needs to begin before you can actually do it. Yeah. I, I, my gut tells me that they're going to have deals on the table at the combine, and it'll probably leak out because every insider is going to be there. And right. I think you're going to have a pretty good idea of where he's going by the end of next week. That's what I think. And then, then the gig will be up, and they're going to have to come out and say, we haven't decided who we're taking number one overall, but we at least know they're taking a quarterback, and then the commanders can, at that point, start to think about what they want to do. But if they don't hold the fields option in their back pocket, mm-hmm. then the gig is up on what their intentions are. Uh, so at that point, then it's like, you would trade out of Caleb Williams after you traded Justin Fields? Really? What price do you want for that? Or if you really love Drake May that much, why don't you just take him? Right. 
Um, you can start making trades the second um, the league year starts. So that would be March 13th. March 13th. But you could prob- we'll probably hear about this. This is when all the people are there. And they're going to want to know well in advance before the draft and before OTA. So they're going to want to get a deal done. Any team that wants to acquire him is going to want to get a deal done. All right, so let's just say that this is all trending that way, and that's where it's going. It is worth mentioning that the legal tampering starts March 5th. So that means that means it'll be done by then. You'll have to agree in principle to a trade. Well, the, the legal tampering, but that's tampering. Right. Like the Bears can engage in trade talks. Yes, correct. Yeah, yeah that's absolutely. that's yeah, totally yeah. up to them to yeah. do so. Yes, what you can't do is go talk to his people on his behalf without the Bears knowing that you're that's doing right. that. Yes, correct. And yeah. then March fifth rolls around, you could actually start doing. Well, you can't even do that. You can do it with free agents. You can't do it with a guy who's under contract. You still can't do that with a guy that's under contract unless the team allows you to have trade conversations. So even in his case, the legal tampering thing doesn't even matter for him. But if the Bears are engaged in it, that's fine. And I have a feeling it's going to happen sooner rather than later, and it's going to happen really, really fast. I had had that messed up. March 5th is the um, franchise and transition tag. It's March 11th is the quote-unquote legal tampering. Legal tampering. So that doesn't really matter. And then when does does free agency actually? March 13th. That's the Two days in advance because they hated this whole at 1201. Somehow you came up with a $100 million contract. You you negotiated that in one minute. That's That's amazing. I've never heard of anything like that before. Like I told you, it's my favorite reminiscing uh, surfing extreme skins at 1201 on free agency day. (laughs) I can't order a Big Mac faster than you got a deal done with Albert (laughs) Hainsworth. How did you do that? How did you do it? Well, my favorite is when. It was it uh, Vanden Bosch, the guy. Remember the pass rusher from the yeah, Titans, uh-huh. and he signed with the Lions. Yeah, yeah. He said he woke up at like eight a.m. the next morning and he didn't remember signing the contract. Yeah, he doesn't remember <laughs> he that. Got him drunk. They got him he, real he drunk. Signed with the Lions. Got him drunk. <laughs> he signed a contract. That's a way to do it. <laughs> okay. The All Vegas right. wedding them. <laughs> Let's game this out. Fields thinks he's being traded, uh-huh. or or it's a or, shot across the bow, but like. Tell me. I, I, bet you this tell is, me. I, I think this is more I tell me because I bet you he's asked and they probably like, because don't he know. wants his options, too. That's right. Because That's right. he's sitting there going, if we don't do this before free agency, the Steelers might sign Kirk Cousins right. or right. the Falcons might sign Kirk Cousins. And those might be the places I want to go. Right. And he's, he's like, I don't want to play for crazy haircut Davis out there in Vegas. Correct. Crazy haircut Davis. That's a great. That's a great nickname, by the way. Crazy haircut. At Davis. Crazy haircut Davis. <laughs> so, I got a right. couple good ones. So today. crazy Field, haircut Davis and Ted Coin. Fields and his people need to ramp this up because they want to pick their team that yes. they're going to, right, right, or at least try or, to, or, or steer it, steer it one steer way. It. If the compensation is the same. You want to steer, steer it the it. way you want. Yeah. Yes, steer it whichever way they want it to go and end up where they want it to that's be. Right. Right? right. So they want to try to, and I don't blame them. They want to get ahead of it. All right. I think that that is going to happen. So let's just say he's traded somewhere. Obviously, it's not us. Yeah. Traded somewhere. All right. So that is no longer in the Bears' back pocket, which means they are definitively taking a quarterback. They have to at That's that right. point, yep. which means it's unlikely they would trade out of the number one pick, right? Correct. Why would we then trade with them? That's right. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Because if they like Drake May, I'm not trading with you. Of course not. Yeah, no. You're. you're... If you take Caleb Williams, what am I going to do about it? That's right. Yes. But like... If you want Caleb Williams, why would you trade out of the pick? That's right. Yeah, that, this, this is what I have been barking up of the whole entire time is if the Bears are taking, if, if the Bears trade fields, you have to stand pat because you just don't know what they're going to do. And Well, you have to let them pick who they want to pick and right. they can try to threaten you that they're going to take somebody, but they're going to take their guy. They have the number one pick. That's right. And if they go, well, we both like Caleb Williams. What do you want to do about it? And we'd go, you don't want him? Yeah, right. <laughs> Right. You obviously are picking a quarterback. Yep. If you're telling me you would trade out because you're threatening me, it means you would want somebody else. Right. Your so old, take the other person. Your old, uh, and we're all good. We'll high five each other. Your old historic hall isn't happening there because you need one now. This one, this is so, this is incredible. I mean, it really is because there's three really, really high tier quarterback prospects. You could make a case for any of them. I think in their case, taking Jaden Daniels because the skill set is so reminiscent of Fields. Yeah that I think it's a very risky thing to do for them. Like, they already know what they have in fields. Daniels has the same skill set. Like, you're getting a facsimile of him, except that he's not as big, actually. He better be incredible. Of course. He better be. Yeah. 
So it leads me to believe that there's no way they're going to do that, that they're going to land on Mayor Williams, right? And most likely Williams. Most likely that's what they would do. But how could they call us if they've already traded fields and say, do you want Caleb Williams? Because we're going to be like, well, you obviously don't care if you get him. So go ahead and pick Drake May then. Go ahead. This could also do be, it. This could also be the opposite, though, because all they've said is that all the reporting is they're going to have a plan. So maybe also what they're going to do at the Combine is talk with other teams about trading out of it, too. Maybe they're weighing both. Maybe. And if they don't hear something they want, they're way more at peace with trading fields and then just taking Williams or whoever they think could be number one. That could be the other part of that. I don't know how they don't take Caleb Williams. I agree. But I also You're starting the clock over. He looks like he might be special. You haven't won anything with Fields. I love Fields. You haven't won it. Last year, I was like, go get him. When they had the number one pick, I'm like, go get that guy, Ron. That's your answer. Go get him. And they didn't. (laughs) They didn't do that. They don't do anything. They didn't do that. (laughs) But but maybe, like like I said, you're sitting down with all these teams talking about fields. But then when you get into your meeting with Crazy Hair Davis, he goes, I'll give you four first-round picks if you just let me go to number one. That's right. And they go... All right, we like the sound of that because we'll then, maybe then they'll use those four first round picks to maneuver back up and get Marvin Harrison but or here, whatever. Okay, so one of two things is going to happen fast. Then they're either going to get the crazy deal yep. and trade out of it, yep. or they got to trade Fields because Fields is going. I want to direct where I want to go. Right. You need to. I can't make you trade me to Atlanta or wherever it yeah. is because he, apparently he's following Drake London and <laughs> Kyle Pitts now. <laughs> so. He can't make them do it, yeah, right. but he wants to direct it. And if you're the Falcons who are going to go get a quarterback one way or the other, it's going to be, are you trading him to us or not? And if you're not, we got to go do something else. It's a disaster if he goes to Atlanta. You think? Why? I recently saw this clip from this podcast. It was my favorite clip I've ever seen. And it was, uh, it was a couple of rappers from Atlanta. I forget who it was. And they were like, we can't handle winning here. And the guy was like, what are you talking about? He's like, we just can't handle it. Like, what do you mean? They're like, because once we start winning, we all start partying. We become friends with the players. And all the players come out and party. And by the late the season, we start partying so much (laughs) that no one can work anymore. Is it that that a lot of places, though? How is that not a lot of places? Why is it different there? Why is it not in Vegas if it's going to be like that? ATL party is different. And I think you know this. It's a different kind of party scene. And and he said, we can't handle winning. How is that not New Orleans? Uh, they probably, they probably look out. That's a rabbit hole you don't even want to know Correct. about. Correct. I bet you though that they've got like agents there that are like, no, you guys gotta get get out of here. With Atlanta, he said, <laughs> he said at halftime of the Super Bowl, the club started selling out because oh. people thought they were they're gonna win. It was such a shoe and they were gonna win. The line started forming to get into the clubs at halftime. Oh, and they like, expected everybody to what come home uh-huh. or something. Yes. Oh, uh huh. And basically was like, we can't handle winning because we all get too close. And then everyone starts partying and there's girls throwing themselves at the athletes. Oh, no. <laughs> and I'm just saying. If Justin but Fields, how could that not be the case in New Orleans, Tampa, I'm telling you, it's just different. Uh, Las Vegas, it's different. It's different. LA? It's different. <laughs> I'm just going to keep saying it's different in Atlanta. What about Baltimore, Hud? It's different. Fails point there, Hud. Don't think it has the same ring to... Uh, Stavros uh, is like, the girls are yeah. throwing themselves yeah. at me. <laughs> having to dodge them <laughs> watch out in atlanta i'm gonna go with magic city uh different than whatever is in fell's point <laughs> mm. uh albert breer does confirm in his reporting the trade talks will commence at the combine yeah it doesn't is. mean that they're going to trade him at that point yeah. but i think we're all we're steamrolling towards there's got to be a resolution and it could be you could be right crazy hair davis could show up and offer something nuts. And Minnesota out. could offer something nuts. Right, correct. I don't think they would take Minnesota's call, but like it could be the Raiders. It could be the Patriots. Yep. Yep. Right. It could, could be. be um could be Seattle. Like could Seattle trade up? They've got Gino on a cheap deal. Pittsburgh. It'd yep. be unusual for them, right. but it could be. It could be a couple teams we're not even thinking about right. that would try to do this. Because right. You know, he can't. He's stuck. <laughs> He's stuck. <laughs> He can't do anything about it. It's right. Dak. It's it, he's Dak uh, or bust. He's ride or die, Dak. He's got no choice. <laughs> Let's ride. He's got ride or die. Dak. It is. It's <laughs> it is because the way the contract is, he's like sixty million against the cap. They're way over it. They right. have to restructure with him. They can't cut or trade him. Cowboys country. Let's ride. Oh man.
That'd be a trade. Send Dak to Denver and Russ down to Dallas. Oh, God. <laughs> be an all-time trade. Oh, my God. I'd watch that. They'd panic down there. Uh, there was reporting that uh, Russell Wilson has his house up for sale. And the I mentioned this yesterday, that like for some reason, the betting boards went from plus 1,400 to minus 120, Russ to the Steelers. Yep, right, exactly. Serious question here. Mm-hmm. Why? Uh, they probably think they can get him for cheap. And they can't. He's, they got to take on his contract. Well, if they cut him. The Broncos cut him. If they the cut him. The whole league him. could stand pat and go, we're not trading for that contract. Why would they trade for that contract? Oh, you can't trade for that contract. Right. right. So and unless, then, unless I said they do the Brock Osweiler trade and they attach a draft pick to Russ. Maybe. That could be a possibility. They could say, we'll give you a second round pick if you take the contract on, which the Steelers but, and might plus, like, And all the signing bonus goes to Denver anyway. There's right. no way to transfer and the Steelers that. might that jump That goes on that. Denver no matter what. Right. So if they get them, I think the base salary, I have to look it up, but I think the base salary then is in like the 30s. And that's a, these days, a Pretty below good. average number. Right. Probably right for someone like him who uh, has the capability. I don't, he's not going to go over well up there. You don't know that, though. If if Tomlin talks everyone off the ledge, it could possibly happen. Possibility. The the cap hits $35 million. Yeah, for Russ. Does that include the signing bonus, though? Which would end up being gone. Does not include the signing bonus. Signing bonus is a separate $10 million. Oh, sorry. The base salary is $17 million. My bad. The base salary is seventeen. Yeah, it says okay. base salary seventeen. Cap hits 35. base salary seventeen. Signing bonus would go. Their dead cap is eighty five million. How do they do that? Well, if you're gonna get how out would of it, they you do that? <laughs> so there's an option, and there's a signing bonus. The cap hit technically is thirty five million dollars, but it's actually more like twenty five for the Steelers because the signing bonus goes on the dead cap. There is no real out here. Right. Oh, no, 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 I'm sorry. I, I'm wrong about that. The dead cap is $39 million. <laughs> They're going to have to eat it at some point anyway. That's the right. dead cap in any one of the five years is at least $37 million. <laughs> any of them. <laughs> it's the worst so, contract in the league. It's terrible. That it's or, worse Deshaun. Than, or Deshaun. But Deshaun's at least you're still hanging on. Maybe he is a professional quarterback. I mean, he's got three, well, three years. It's three years left. Yeah, right. And there's no moving off. It's all guaranteed. So there's no moving off of it. So mm-hmm. if you trade him, you're trading a fully guaranteed contract, which means nobody's going to do that. Right. Not unless he like turned his career around. And if he did, why would they trade him? That's right. Like yeah. if he started playing like he did in Houston, why would they trade right. him at that point? So they're going to eat 40. No, wait. No, no. The dead cat. The dead cap this year is $85 million. How are they getting rid of him? How's that even possible? I don't know. They're acting like they're going to cut him, though. If they cut him, if they don't cut him, the base salaries then go over to Pittsburgh or whoever. That's what I'm saying. They might I don't know to, how they're doing this. Like I said, they have to do the Osweiler deal. They have to attach a draft pick. To take it. Yeah. But then they're going to eat it for a year. Like, bad. What are you going to do? I mean... That's a quarter of the, that's a more than a quarter. It's 40% of the cap. <laughs> Are the players not there? I guess if you did it post June 1, Stidham, you could probably down. Wow. That's crazy. Uh some other ones that are out there. Gabe Davis apparently did an 8-minute video saying goodbye to Buffalo today. Oh, okay. Uh he's a free agent to be. Um guess they're not franchise tagging him. No, I don't know how you would make him a top five receiver. I know. I'm just. Um, and I actually, he was one of the reasons why I didn't like them in the playoffs late. I'm like, that's their deep threat yeah, without right. him. Right. Now, this is a classic. He's going to go somewhere else, get a lot of money, and not produce. Yeah, probably. Not, not. produce like that. Yeah, yeah, right, right. Although, if the price is right, I could see Kansas City being interested in him. Yep, for sure. He's done it on a high level before. Mm-hmm. That's right. Uh, the other one's T. Higgins. Mm-hmm. Are they going to literally franchise him? If they literally franchise him, they're about to franchise Chase too. Yeah, that's right. So they'd have two franchised receivers. I don't, I don't think that that's a good idea. But like, okay, but they don't want to lose him, so they may do it and let Tyler Boyd walk, which seems to be the right choice between the two, and then deal with Chase when his comes up, which yeah. I think is a year away from him coming right. up. Chase, I would try to get done right now. So would I. I mean, I would just lock that in. He's probably going to wait and go, let me see what Justin Jefferson gets. Because Justin Jefferson's talking about making a gazillion dollars. Yeah, that's true. So I would wait that one out. 
And then Mike Evans apparently is, according to reporting, far off on a long-term yep. deal. Right. And they don't think they're going to franchise him. So it sounds like he's going to end up somewhere else. And that market's going to be vibrant. That's going to be all the contenders trying to get him on one and two years. Kansas deals. City. Yep, Kansas City all over it, for sure. All over They're going to they're gonna go, do you want another ring? He's going to go, yes. <laughs> I want Mike Evans one. And if that doesn't work out, I would sign Gabe Davis. Mm-hmm. Right. And you want to pay the same amount of money, you're going to give Mike Evans. Mike Evans is going to get whatever McLaurin got, 25, 27 right. million, something like that on a couple of years. Right. He's going to be worth every penny for a team like that. And then there's uh, Kirk. So Kirk, Kirk wants guaranteed money again, according uh-huh. to the reporting. Good the Vikings him. apparently don't want to give it to him this time. <laughs> so they're going to lose him. Yep. He's probably leaving anyway. So they are the, honestly, they are Huckleberry. Right. Like, if we were willing to trade out of number two, I got a funny feeling they'd call us and offer something nuts. Right. If we were willing to do that. If you want Michael Penix or J.J. McCarthy to be your quarterback, <laughs> you could do that. I don't want the uh, the Colt guy. Or the Howellians <laughs> may enjoy this as well. I'm yeah. just saying. I think we're the ones where's, that are going to get the phone calls because the Bears are going to make— when they trade fields, it's going to be obvious what they're doing, and they're not going to trade off of it. Why would they at that the point? So we're the ones who are going to be getting all the phone calls. Where are the Vikings picking? Nine. Uh, something like that. Nine or ten, something. Something like that. The Raiders, I remember, are 13, and they're going to be calling around. Right. They're going to probably want Jaden Daniels. Right. Probably. Uh, let me see what the draft order is. Uh, they're Vikings 11. 11. Vikings are 11. So if we go to 11, you could get J.J. McCarthy. That's what you'd get. 11 and Justin Jefferson. <laughs> For number two. Pay him. Paul. I have a feeling, like, we're going to be in the funny spot. Bears trade fields. They're taking Caleb Williams. There's nothing to get them off of it unless someone gives them such a ridiculous thing mm-hmm. that they'll do it, right? And then someone else is getting them. Well, who's calling us? Right. Mm-hmm. And what are we getting offered? Chargers. Crazy Harbaugh wants his guy. <laughs> no. Well, are you giving us Herbert? Yeah. Fine. Herbert. And Give he... us Herbert. <laughs> we're going we're going Herbert, full caller segment. Here. Herbert and your pick <laughs> right. five. Uh-huh. And you get two and, you and get, get your guy. Get your guy JJ. <laughs> <laughs> I'd do that. I'll do that tomorrow. There Would might you like be to do dead that? Chargers fans over that trade. <laughs> I think you'd see people like jump into the Pacific Ocean. I think you'd see, just be like, "What?" I think you'd see people burn their Chargers jerseys, all four of them, and could then you imagine, switch to the Rams. <laughs> could you imagine if they called us and offered us Justin Herbert for the number two overall and pick? I, and and then, then we're like, "Well, we want five too." And they're like, "Fine," because <laughs> we have to take on the money. Then I would say, "Remember when I told you all that Harbaugh was crazy, and everyone said it was going to work out over there?" That would that would be I the most insane. So that hard. would be the most insane thing that ever happened. Be if they did that. The most insane thing. I would I'd be like, what? Hey, uh, Dan, you guys want a quarterback? I got one for you. Hey, hey, <laughs> you, you you want a quarterback? And then Peters is like, tell him we're gonna pick JJ. Yeah. He's like, well, tell I don't him. know, John. We really like JJ. Hey, we like your guy. We like your guy, JJ. We heard what you said about him. We studied the film. We think you're right. Like in a more professional offense, it wasn't running as much. We could see it. You guys want this Bosa guy too? We're like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, I guess so. Fine. Throw in a third too. Oh man, we got a lot of cap room. We can take it all in. <laughs> oh my god, that'd be the funniest thing of all time. Get a quarterback and pass rusher. <laughs> oh man.